All right, so it's uh, just about a minute after 11. Do you know if everyone who's in the building is actually here? OK, cool. Uh, so Patty's going to be our Umze today. Um, I just put a message in the chat for those of you who are online saying that uh, the tech is right here in front of you. So uh, things are as they are. I'll do my best to make sure that we can have as good of a service and online experience as possible. But um, we're a little bit out in the wild today. So um, you know, things are recording, and uh, it is what it is, sort of. So let me know if there's a major issue, and I'll fix it. Um, if not, we're just going to deal with it. Uh, so, Patty's going to be our Umze, so let me go ahead and share screen, and hopefully that works, uh, and we'll get going. All right. Teacher, O destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, on to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, O destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, O destroyer, thus gone, Fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, go destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, go destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, Endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, O destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world, to you who were wise at that time, Frustrated, completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes into three worlds, supreme protector. To you I prostrate, endowed with the supreme marks, face like the stainless moon, color like gold. To you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust, matchless one, endowed with knowledge. To you I prostrate, protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, but thus gone, I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, through the dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well-abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, through the sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma Refuge, homage to the Great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage, 
do not commit any non-virtuous action. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing, and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in time enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginning this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two Bodhicitta's ripen, and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jewel mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. All my masters, my vidams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of the Dhamma's compassion, please send forth waves of your faith. Vidam Guru Ratna Mandala Kamya Yatra. The Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time. Bhagavan was dwelling on Massa Vulture's mountain from Rajagriya, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perfection. Also at that time, Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as teaching of nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shariputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom, should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of their nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristics, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object, and no phenomena. There is no eye element and so on, up to and repeated, no mind of and no mental consciousness of it. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to and repeated, no aging and death, and no extinction of aging. 
Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, creation, or parity. There is no self existence, no attainment, and also no non attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind with creation and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifest the completely awakened, the unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment, and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth, since it is not false, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, praise, piety, Vaiputra, Bodhisattva, Mahasattva should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration, commended the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Akhavishvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of a woman. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you've indicated, even to Chakra. Bhagavan having thus spoken, Venerable Shaivai Putra, Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the golden cloud, including the Shuras and Pandavas, were overjoyed and highly pleased at the book. Okay. So, out there in uh, Zoom land, can you hear me? Because uh, if you guys are texting the admin saying you can't hear, I can't see that because I'm up here. So, hit thumbs. Okay, great. So, I'm Connor, as most of you probably know. Um, sorry. Um, so uh, currently, uh, you guys can't really see it behind the altar. Uh, behind me is a, a Buddha statue, um, which has been there for about seven years. Um, I don't know exactly how long. Uh, it's about a foot high, about this high. Uh, and it was actually brought over by the abbot of Serge um, as a gift. And let me show you a picture of it. So that's what's currently on our altar right now. Um, and this, this is the statue that I'm speaking of right now. Um, and it's beautiful. Uh, and when I started coming to Lion's Roar, that's the, the Buddha statue that I started to associate with Buddhism and with Lion's Roar, because um, it was all that I knew. Uh, and so, right now that's the the statue that's there again but in early 2020 um a much larger one arrived and that was sponsored by some members and it's quite similar to the one that's there now um but it's much bigger so let me find a picture Just let me here here's a picture of llama in that statue 
So Lama is actually very close to this statue, and you can see the, the size comparison between full-size Lama and full-size statue, right? I mean, it's a vastly larger statue, and it's also beautiful. Um, and if you can see in that first picture, let's see if I can go back to it. You can see this throne here, this red part. Uh, Patty put a very nice picture of it, I think in the roar this week, right? No, okay, she didn't. We tried to. All right, <laughs> but we didn't. It didn't make it in. Um, but this is a throne that's actually made for that larger statue, custom built um, by one of the Mongolians uh, at San Bazaar, one of Geshe Damsha's students. Um, and it is, it's really built. It's actually quite heavy um, because that large statue is really heavy. Uh, I don't know who, if the same builder did the painting on it, but it's hand painted. Um, and it's custom built to filter our altar and the statue. Um, so when that new statue was received, it actually came in two large wooden crates. I don't know if it was Nepal or India. Susan, do you remember if it came from Nepal or India? Nepal, okay. She's saying Nepal, if you guys can't hear. Yeah, okay. Um, and, and those came to uh, Middleway Health. And for some reason, mostly excitement, <laughs> Alamala, Maikano, and myself decided to actually get it up on the altar that evening. Uh, and needless to say, uh, I ripped my jeans. Okay. Lama also almost lost a finger. Uh, and I learned a couple things. I learned that statues that size come in two pieces and that they are extremely heavy, right? I mean, we're, we're talking about something that is big. I mean, that's a large item. Uh, and that they're hollow inside. I didn't know that. I was unaware that they are actually hollow inside um, and just how heavy they are. But they don't stay empty. They're not intended to stay empty or hollow. And that they get much, much heavier for very good reason. Um, because the artists who create the statue, who create those statues, uh, they're actually creating a vessel. And what is that vessel for? Well, that vessel is actually for life. And I think that's actually really cool. Um, and so the whole purpose of having a Buddha statue is to actually have Buddha around, right? We want Buddha to come into the space. We want Buddha to be with us. So that's why we have Buddha statues. That's why we have Tara statues. That's why we have Manjushri statues, is to bring those Buddhas and Bodhisattvas into our space. So there's lots of ways to invite Buddhas and Bodhisattvas into the spaces and into our meditations. Let's focus on statues for right now. Um, so over the past few weeks, you guys have been seeing announcements in the roar and uh, during services to come help us roll mantras. And so we've been rolling these mantras and they're long strips of paper. Let me see if Zoom will let me show you that. So here's a picture of some of them. Um, and so those are two different ones. So this is a full page. This other one has a page that's actually been cut into several different sizes with different mantras, or maybe they're the same mantras in different sizes. So one night, Geshe Damsho taught a couple of us how to actually do this so that when we had larger groups, we could actually teach other people how to do it. Um, and we made a short video of this, and that video is actually posted on YouTube. So you guys can look on our YouTube page and you'll find it. It comes up pretty easily. Um, and there are many mantras, right? and each strip has one mantra. So it's the same mantra on each strip. And uh, it's repeated over and over and over again. I don't know how many mantras are in each strip. There's probably actually a set number or something, I don't know. Um, and there's a lot of mantras in each packet. And I think for our statue, we're using about 20 mantras or so. I don't know the exact number. Um, but some of these mantras are placed in the, the head portion of the statue. Some of them are placed in the chest and torso and the arms. And then some of them are placed in the base of the statue, so the lotus base, it's called. 
Um, and there's a system of these mantras, and that system is called the denya. Um, and then there's at least two, two kinds of the denya system. Uh, one I think was actually developed by Lama Yeshi, and one is a little bit more classical. Um, and this denya system actually gives numbers to these mantras which makes it a little bit easier to figure out which one has to go where. So, you know, you want, oh, we want 50 of number one, two of number two, you know, 18 of number six. So it makes it just a little bit easier to grab them and, and keep going. Um, so just a little system of classification. So the system of Denya that we're actually using is based on the field of merit. Um, so Geshla told me, and I don't know how the numbers correspond exactly, but Geshe said that the mantras which go in the head area are at the top of the field of the merit, and the projectors are at the bottom in the lowest lotus space, and that there's actually some mantras that'll go all over. So, like because we have a, a, a Shakyamuni Buddha statue, Shakyamuni Buddha mantra can actually go anywhere and should go everywhere. So, if you're not familiar with the field of merit, let me show you a picture of that. So this is, is this the better one? Yeah, this is the better one. So this is the field of merit. We've got Lama Sankapa in the top. It actually it goes higher, and there's other things at the top of this field of merit. We've got a, a great picture of it. Yeah, it's not going to load right now. <laughs> That's OK. But there it is. OK. So there's other things at the top of it that we're not really going to go into right now, because we could spend a lot of time on this. But um, so there's bodhisattvas who are um, sort of at the top here and then we've got protectors at the bottom and there's just different uh bodhisattvas at different areas um and that's actually how geshe remembers where they're supposed to go whose mantra goes where um i don't actually remember i, I read a little bit in the um mom rim about who is where I'm not going to say who is where because I don't remember that. I have not studied enough of that. I'm sure there's some who, who are here who have, um, and you can look it up if you are interested. Um, but you know, different statues will have a different mixture of uh, mantras in them in different areas. So that's part of why the the numbering system is uh, easy. So I thought that was actually really interesting when, when Geshe was talking to me about that. Lama Yeshis is just a little bit different numbering system. So I, I think it's very similar. I think it just has a different numbering system or a different sort of, I don't know, he, he liked to put things in a di little different areas. I don't know why. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, this is the the ninety level course, not even the hundred level course. <laughs> all right. So uh, once all the mantras are rolled, oh, let me hear. This is the fun part. I brought out some of the mantras. So these are different mantras here. You can they're not really great. Over here, you can sort of see them online. Yeah, I'm trying to find a good way to see them online. So they're different sizes. They're they're all about the same diameter, um, and uh, it's a fun process, right? So once all of them are rolled, these are both chest uh, areas. So they both go sort of in the chest area of the chest and arms of the statue. But once they're all rolled, um, uh, Kishi Damsho and Lama Jimpa are going to consecrate the statue. And mantras, if you guys remember, are enlightened speech. So the consecration statue asks Buddha's emptiness mind, as Geshe said, to come into the statue. So the statue will no, no longer just be a well-formed piece of metal. Uh, you know, the Buddhas come when we ask. So when you ask the Buddha to come, it is then a vessel for the Dharmakaya of Shakyamuni Buddha. 
right? Buddha's emptiness mind will come to that statue and will reside there because we've given it something, we've given it enlightened speech to reside within. So that's why rolling the mantras is so important. That's why coming together and why we, uh, you know, we, we have this process of doing it to put the, the vessel together and to fill the statue so that we have a place for Buddha to come. So we bring Buddha into the temple. So the rolling of the mantras is really important. You know, we, we take a stick of incense and we roll the strip of papers around that bit of incense up. And then we wrap a, a wrapper around it so it sticks together and we glue it. And then after we take a little flag so we know which one it was, so that number in that denya system sticks up. And then we wrap it with yellow paper or fabric. And then we set it aside. And eventually it gets put into the statue. And we're going to consecrate the statue before the end of the month. And we have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of mantras to go into the statue. It's a big statue, right? It took three men to pick that thing up and put it on the altar. It's heavy, it's big, and it's going to get heavier with all these mantras that we're putting into it. Um, along with the mantras that go into it, the idea is that no, there shouldn't be any empty space. So the, the little bits of incense that we broke off when we're, you know, rolling those teeny tiny little strips or even the bigger strips that we snap the incense and it shatters and we get a new piece, all those little bits of incense are going to be stuffed into those empty spaces. You know, possibly other, you know, text will be put in there as well. Other things will fill all of that space within the statue. Um, and, uh, you know, Geshe's come to me many times over the past year saying that this is what the community does together. You know, rituals are a way of practice. It's a way to come together, that we do something that's a little out of the ordinary, that maybe doesn't seem to have any conventional purpose, but it actually does. It's doing stuff that we work together and uh, it builds some social cohesion. And that's a really major purpose that you know, sometimes we miss. Sometimes we miss that in cleaning or we miss that in coming and doing Medicine Buddha together, even when we don't feel like it, that, you know, maybe it's not about saying the words, but it's about being together. And COVID, we've missed a lot of that in the past year and a half. Um, and that's one of the reasons why the mantra rowing is open to absolutely everyone if you're vaccinated and will wear a mask because we need everyone and we want everyone and we want that social cohesion and we want people to come um and it's important it's important for us to bring buddha into our space and to have fun and to talk and to catch up just yesterday we had a really nice group of five of us rolling mantras and talking and catching up because some of us hadn't seen each other in a very long time and it was a really nice time. And I can't say that I haven't had that much fun in a long time. And you would think that this would be an easy process of just rolling up paper. Yeah. How easy could this be? Oh, you're rolling up little springs. Don't, don't deny that it couldn't be hard, okay? It's actually rather difficult. You know, I've had some injuries in the past month that you know, really challenged my dexterity. And, uh, you know, it's challenging. It takes a long time to do this. It takes, uh, it takes some concentration. That doesn't mean that you can't laugh and that we can't have fun together. So we can do it. We can get, to, we can get this done. The lotus base is the last part that we have to do. So there's going to be a lot of cutting. I guess it's going to come on Wednesday and walk me through what needs to be cut and the sizes that we need. And, then next Saturday, we have a lot of rolling to do and a lot of cutting to do and Sunday and next Saturday and Sunday and then we're going to consecrate the statue. So we really need everyone to come out. And this is really Dharma on the very, very basic level. You know, our, our teachers, our gurus, Lama Jinpa and, and Geshe Damsho, they're showing us how to do something and they're providing us with the means to do it. 
Buddha, we're literally bringing Buddha here with us, you know, to better follow his teachings. Dharma, we're participating in preparing a sacred vessel. We're reading mantras, we're saying the mantras, you know, even if we don't understand them, you can meditate while you're doing the work. You can start with having the right view. You know, all of this is Dharma and Sangha. You know, the Arya Sangha is with us when we're saying mantras, but this is also means spending time with others, right? And so we've had precious little time to do this. And the mantra rolling sessions are open to everyone. And I literally mean everyone, if you're vaccinated and will come and wear a mask, please come. Please roll mantras with us next Saturday. Why am I saying next Saturday when it's on the schedule for tonight? Is because we finished the mantras that we have yesterday, which was actually really cool. If you want to come clean with us this, this evening, please come clean because that's also bodhisattva work. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want to come for a half hour, great. If you want to come for an hour, great. If you want to come for four hours, you know, that's four hours of practicing Dharma. It's four hours of Guru, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And all of that pays off because then we have Buddha with us all the time. And that's really what we're looking for is to practice Dharma. So that's what this is. And, you know, I get emails every week from people who are like, when is temple gonna be open? When is temple gonna be open? I really wanna come to temple. And I'm like, come to mantra rolling. So I hope you guys will come. Um, I did wanna keep this short today. So I'd only prepared for a little bit uh, because I thought we we're gonna have a lot of mantras to roll, but the group that came yesterday was just amazing. So, uh, I'm going to open it up for questions. Oh, yeah. So um, Saturdays are going to be noon to 5, and Sundays on student talks, which means the rest of the Sundays until the end of the month, will be from 2 to 5. Um, if we get overwhelmed, I will start opening up weekdays. So just watch the roar and watch the calendar online. So. But if you guys have questions, um, Zoom, unfortunately, you need to type your questions into the chat. Um, I see a question. Can we come this afternoon if we don't know how to roll mantras? Stephen, that's a great question. You can, but we have no mantras to roll. So if you want to come, if you're vaccinated and willing to wear a mask, I have lots of cleaning and we have others tasks that we would love some help with, which is also Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, and Guru, and Bodhisattva tasks um, that we'd love some help with. Other questions? Discussion? Do you... Yeah, for right now, because it was going to be mantra rolling, I would say that non refuge people, if you want to come help clean, I have some outdoor tasks that we could do. Um, and uh, mantra rolling is open to any and all. So non refuge people are also uh, invited to mantra rolling. Yeah. Uh, either the 30th or 31st. I don't have information on the actual process of, she, it, it oh yeah, her so the, the question was, what is the process of the consecration? I, I can't tell you the actual process um, about what exactly is going to happen. I will tell you that the mantras go into the statue and then there's prayers. <laughs> that's general enough for you. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Is there any way we can find out what the mantras are and what they mean? Um, yeah, yeah it's on. so some of the mantras are easy enough to read. Some of them are not. 
uh, you could always copy it down or take a picture of it and ask Eshla. Uh, we have an online question. What is the statue made out of? Generally, it's made out of metals of various sorts. Um, the face, actually, most faces of, of statues have um, gold leaf. So ours does have a gold leaf face. Um, usually when they're putting, I don't know if ours would, I couldn't get a clear answer from Geshla. Um, there's, uh, uh, what's the name of it? there's a, a certain kind of stick that has a special name that'll sometimes go in the middle. It sort of uh, doesn't really represent one of the channels, but it, it sort of represents, um, I guess it sort of represents the channels and then it will have certain writings on it. So you put like this big, special stick in the middle of the, the statue. The statue has to be a certain size before you get to there. So I don't know if ours is of that size. Um, and then you'll sort of, uh, you know, write things like in Tibetan about, you know, what is it? You write, um, uh, hmm. you know, you, you sort of label where the throat is, where the heart is, the mind is, and certain other things. Um, but I'm not sure that we'll have that or not. I, don't, I just don't know. I think part of it is also to support the, the mantras that you place in there. So like really big statues, um, like the, the giant statue that Geshe uh, Sewang did several years ago, that had a gigantic post in the middle, and that was used as a, a support brace to actually place mantras and relics on. But that statue was like, that was the giant one. It was like 25 feet or something. So, do you, Are you putting relics in those? I don't think so, but that's a better question for Geshla. Um, Lama has these two books, which are FTMP publications. Oops, sorry, that's probably painful. Um, they are part one and part two called Statues and Stupas, the benefits and practices related to. Um, so they've got some interesting information, mostly on stupas, about like how to build stupas and a little bit on statues in here. Um, I'm not sure if they're available online, but okay. yeah, I'm not seeing any other questions, so I think maybe we'll just keep this short today. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to email me. Um, but let's just go ahead and do dedication. Okay. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, we are the source of all happiness and growth. All powerful turn rigid, tempting gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the upholders of the teachings remain forever. 
May all my greeters achieve happiness. May they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Blue song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, and fading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of optical compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy landscapes. Losang Dharma, we make requests at your holy feet. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm not sure we have any announcements right now. Okay. So today uh, we did our first outdoor walking meditation and, it, and we're offering it every other Sunday. So like the, the days that students teach typically we'll be doing it. So um, you know, join us, we're walking slowly through the neighborhood and our pace is just, uh, we decided our pace is gonna be towards to fit with the slowest person in our group. And, um, and everybody, all levels of experience are welcome. So thank you. Oh, of course. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, and this is also an opportunity to come together with friends and Sangha on Wednesdays at, um, at 6 o'clock. We have medit in-person meditation. Uh, you, of course, just like all of our practices, we are requiring that you be vaccinated and wear masks. Any other, anybody else? There's a, oh, yes. It's in the Gampa. It's in the Gampa. There's a lot of uh, um, things coming up, so please uh, keep your eye on the roar, and um, you'll be seeing some really exciting news coming up very soon. And uh, anyway, so. So, uh, Refuge students, you received an email in the last few days with a survey in it. If you could please complete that and return it, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, actually, all of us would greatly appreciate it. So if you could do that, thanks. Um, other than that, have a good day. Thank you, Connor. I have an announcement real fast. It's not too late. There is a, this is Matthew Cruz. There is a garden party on three for all uh, people who have participated in taking care of the garden in any form. And if you're interested in caring for the garden at some point and being part of these activities, please come by. It is from three to five this coming Saturday. Love to see you. Thanks. <laughs>